In this demo we show how to perform a disaster recovery drill for a database replicated from SQL Server to Azure using Managed Instance Link feature with SQL Server Management Studio. So we have previously created a link to replicate this database on SQL Server which is running on a VM in Azure to Business Critical Managed Instance and we can see both replicas of this database and if we expand distributed availability group configured for this link we can see that the primary replica is on SQL Server and that the secondary replica is on SQL Managed Instance. This becomes obvious when we uh, look at endpoint URL which obviously points to Managed Instance FQDN. To invoke a link failover from SQL Server to SQL Managed Instance for this database, uh, we can proceed in several ways. We can uh, right-click on primary database replica on SQL Server and select failover, or we can right-click on distributed availability group and select failover, or we can right-click on the secondary database replica on SQL Managed Instance or, and as the fourth option, right-click on Distributed Availability Group on SQL Managed Instance. Uh, this triggers a link failover wizard. The introductory screens give some general information about failovers supported. On the next screen, in the upper part, uh, we get some information about the local link replica. We see that it is secondary, hosted on Managed Instance, and that both planned and uh, forced failover are supported. Planned manual failover is data lossless and should be used whenever both the SQL Server and SQL Managed Instance are available. Forced failover can be data lossy and should be used only in true disaster scenario. In this demo we are doing drill so we select plan manual failover. Then we log into Azure and to SQL Server uh, using our credentials. All authentication types are supported on both SQL Server and in Azure. On the next screen we select operations to be executed post failover. Uh, this uh, picture represents uh, failover and says that the role swap will be done after we do a failover so link will remain. Uh, then the next option is whether about whether we wish to keep the link after failover or not. We wish to keep it. Then we click on next. This is all steps that will be executed. And if we wish, we can click on this script button, which will generate a script for us, which we want to use for our own purposes. Uh, after a very short while, failover is successfully executed. In case any errors occur, we will be able to right-click on the uh, details column and get more information about what went wrong. But everything went okay in our case. And to confirm that we indeed done failover, we can expand distributed availability group on SQL MI and we can see now that the secondary replica is now on SQL Server and the primary replica is on SQL Managed Instance. Now uh, we wish to demonstrate that replication from SQL MI to SQL Server works. So right now we are on SQL Managed Instance and we will create a new test table. This is table 3 and here we can check that this table has indeed been replicated to SQL Server. Uh, then we want to fail back to SQL Server from SQL Managed Instance and in very similar way we will invoke uh, link failover wizard this time we see that the local replica is in SQL Server. I will fast forward through this because the process is identical and after it has been uh, done we see that the primary uh, replica is now again on SQL Server and the secondary replica is on SQL MI. And finally to verify that the replication uh, is 
working from SQL Server to SQL MI, we can add additional table that can be table four, and we can see that this table four has been replicated to SQL Server. I hope this was useful. Thanks for watching.